everyone welcome back to money monday now this video is a big one you lots and lots of people have requested this and it's how to save for your first home probably one of the <laughs> your biggest um financial decisions you'll ever make is you know buying your first home is the, the biggest asset you potentially will ever buy so it's a really exciting one and you you know with in this day and age with property prices the way they are in many places around the world you need a lot of motivation, a lot of focus, and a lot of determination. So hopefully this video helps you as much as possible. Deciding you want to buy your first home is actually a very exciting and empowering decision that you're making in your, in your life. I really believe that when you set wise and intelligent goals for yourself, you get more meaning out of life. You have um, a bigger and better spring to your step. So your first goal is to set your intention and then give visual inspiration. This will help you keep you focused and motivated. And to be able to do this, we need to understand what is realistically within your reach. Yes, I dream of buying a 10, 15, 20 million dollar home, but I'm not aware that that is out of my reach. I need to make my goals realistic as to what I can afford and what I can actually pay off because remember, we don't want big massive mortgages that we're going to be a slave to for the majority of our lives. We want to be able to, if we buy a home, we want to make sure we can pay it off as quickly as possible. So let's, let me show you how you can work out what is realistically within your reach. To have different guidelines as to how much money they will lend you to buy property. Um, but generally speaking, in Australia, they like to see about a 20% deposit um, before they'll look at lending you money. And they will often or not, they'll ask you to see regular savings plans to show that you have actually saved that money yourself and that you are able to manage your cash flow responsibly and wisely and therefore be able to service the mortgage that the, the, loan's gonna, the bank's going to lend you and you can actually demonstrate that you can pay it off. Then they'll obviously look at your salary. And again, I can't speak for other countries around the world, but in Australia, they will normally lend you a multiple of five times your income. So say, for example, you're earning $50,000 a year. That means the bank is going to lend you about $250,000. Now, just because the bank says they'll lend you, you know, this much money does not necessarily mean you should take all that money. As I said, you want to make sure you can pay it off and in, you do not want the banks always owning you and your, your property. You want to make sure that you can service the loan comfortably and also you can service the loan even with a couple of interest rate rises. So when you're looking at borrowing money, I always say have a look and see what the repayments would be like if interest rates went up by as much as 3% because you want to make sure that no matter what happens, you are still going to be safe and secure living in your home and the bank's not going to come along and repossess it because you defaulted on your mortgage repayments. Also in Australia, most bank, or most mortgage brokers or banks will put you on a default loan of a mortgage of 30 year term. That's insane. If you're say 30 and you're buying your first property and you're on a 30 year repayment plan, that means you're going to make your last mortgage repayment at age 60. Now, I'm just speaking for myself, there's no way I want to be 60 and still paying off my home loan or already just finally paying it off at age 60. That's crazy. You want to be able to try and pay your home off, you know, realistically within 20 years so that you can actually start investing and building up financial wealth and security outside of your family home. So say for example you now know you need to have a $50,000 deposit and the bank is going to lend you $250,000. That means you've got potentially around about $300,000 to spend on a property and of course you've got to factor in other costs such as stamp duty and legal expenses and conveyancing and strata searches and things like that. But for just for simplicity and for my international subscribers I'm not going to I'm going to exclude those costs but I am advising anyone that's going to buy property make sure they understand the buying costs involved with property because it can be incredibly expensive and a bit of a shock if you don't know what those expenses are. So under this assumption, you, you know that you need to have a $50,000 deposit and you can borrow $250,000. So our first goal obviously is to make sure we have that deposit. So if you don't have that $50,000 deposit, you need to save or manifest it as quickly as possible. Now, the first step is obviously to do a budget. You need to know what your current living expenses are like and how much you're capable of being able to save or put away for this deposit. Now, if you go to the Sugar Mama website, um, which is sugarmama.tv, 
and subscribe and then confirm your subscription through MailChimp, you'll receive a welcome email and in that welcome email is a link to download a complimentary budget. And there are two different budgets, one for a family and one for you know single couples. Um, you, you can select which one you want and download them. So that's, a, that's there available for you to get, you know, to start straight away. Once you've worked out your living expenses, you know how much you can save, you obviously start saving. Open up a separate savings account which is dedicated to being your home deposit saving account. And if your internet banking allows it, and most do, nickname the savings account deposit money. That will also help make your, you know, make your goal um, feel more real and actually make you feel better about what you're working towards will actually happen. Now, the moment you get paid every, whether it's a fortnightly or a monthly pay cycle or a weekly pay cycle, the day after you get paid, make sure that that regular saving plan comes out of your everyday account and into your home deposit savings account. You need to make sure you put this as a priority above all your other spending habits if you really want to make it happen. Now, set that up, set it up on an automatic direct debit plan so you don't actually have to think about it, it just happens. And it can obviously, the savings can just naturally grow over time without, you know, requiring too much energy or, or focus or you having to constantly remember to wire, transfer money backwards and forwards. It should be set up as a direct debit plan and regularly look into your account to make sure that your budget is in check and that you do have enough money in your everyday account to pay for your living expenses and maintain your lifestyle. Now, on top of this regular savings plan, you're going to have to come up with extra money if you want to make sure that you can try and buy a property a lot sooner than, than you know, your, your, I guess, calculations or um, saving plan says. Because obviously to save a $50,000 deposit, you know, for most people that's going to take, you know, at least, you know, four or five years. Now, if that's just simply way too slow, what we need to do is manifest money beyond the savings plan. And if you go to the Sugar Mama website and check the $1,000 project, you can see how I've been manifesting parcels of $1,000 at a time outside of my salary, outside of my savings and investing. And I've, obviously my money's not going towards a deposit, it's going towards an investment portfolio. But you can use exactly the same principles and ideas that I've come across to help you know, create more money that I can contribute towards the savings account, which then gets invested. So you can do exactly the same thing. And I mean, I've done things like sold things on eBay. Um, I've rented my house out. Um, obviously, if you're saving for your home, isn't an option. But I've worked on the weekends. Um, I've uh, done all sorts of little funny little savings tips and tricks to just help. You. When I save money, I actually transfer that savings into the, the separate account, so it actually make the savings count rather than just sort of. Um, erode away. Or... Now one point I want to make about having that separate savings account that is nicknamed you know home deposit savings or you know deposit or property purchase whatever you want to nickname it is obviously you've given it you've given that goal intention and action which is very very powerful but by not having that cash sitting in your main account you're less likely to spend it because a lot of people look in their account and go oh wow I've got so much money they go and spend it because you've actually taken it out as a priority before all your other expenses have come out you're helping I guess you'll be a lot more efficient and effective in building that deposit up now, with the manifesting money or creating extra savings, you've got to just keep at it. Keep focused on the goal. You know, I recommend, you know, adding some other sort of visual motivation, which I'll talk about in a second. But keep on repeating the same steps. Increase your savings um, into the, in the regular savings plan, into the home deposit account if you can. Keep on doing extra work, finding ways of saving money or, or earning more money until you have enough money for your deposit on your home. Just focus, be determined, and don't stop until you get there. Now, the pathway for saving for a deposit can definitely be a long one, and there'll be times where you get frustrated and feel depressed and just want to give up. And if you watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I saved for over six years for my first home, and I looked, I remember being at times so depressed and miserable, thinking this is going to take far too long, I can never afford to ever buy something, you know, I should just give up. And if you go through that, that's fine, but you know what? you know, pull yourself together after thinking of that and, and get back on focusing on your dream. And one of the tips um, that I recommend doing is to help you stay focused and motivated and inspired is to get visual. So do your research, get an idea of what you, you know, of what you can buy, for example, with $300,000. You know, whether you can buy an apartment or whether a house, what areas, what, what, was it um, a two bedroom or a one bedroom or a four bedroom house? Like 
all the different things so that you start getting an idea of you know what it's going to look like and feel like living in your you know new home also i recommend if you're getting close towards your deposit and you feel like it's actually going to happen in the next year or so go in and start inspecting properties obviously you can look at them online through domain.com and realestate.com but you can actually go and visit these properties and get a feel for what they look like inside inspecting properties you'll start to get an idea of what you like and what you don't like about properties for example you might find that you know um, natural sunlight is really important you might find that parking is essential or you'll discover that there are neighborhoods that you didn't initially like but actually have huge potential so try and get amongst it as much as possible also go and speak to the real estate agents ask them where they see value in the market what price points are good value for money what's selling what people what sort of properties are people renting what are buyers looking for you know chew real estate agents ear off <laughs> keep the visual motivation going it's going to make a huge difference in keeping that you know focus and determination going even some visualization techniques when you're doing some meditation is also very very powerful that feeling of putting your keys into the door for the first time coming home you know to your own property the feeling of that being excited being proud feeling you know a sense of accomplishment um, you know those are things that are going to help drive you to achieve you know greater successes I'm going to be doing a whole range of videos around property, you know, buying investment properties, um, you know, how to understand mortgages, how to pick a good mortgage, all sorts of different things, and also about how to identify good investment properties. But this is just one of my first introductions, and obviously probably the, one of the most important ones is, you know, it's been a big request and it's been, been requested for a long time now. Anyway, I hope you like this. I hope it's of help. Um, make sure you subscribe, keep your requests coming in, and I will getting through them as quickly as possible. You can follow me on Instagram in the meantime for daily motivation and inspiration. But ciao for now. Bye.